Hello again, folks. Uh, it's Adrian, me, once again. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the U.S. Postal Service. For those not in the know, uh, the post office is uh, you know, in the news a lot lately due to the fact that there is a new postmaster, uh, Louis DeJoy, uh, who has instituted some rules that uh, a lot of people feel are intended to fuck with the, the upcoming election. There is definitely a non-zero percent of the strategy that is meant to fuck with the, the vote-by-mail efforts during the pandemic and quarantine, and certainly there's enough evidence of uh, Louis DeJoy's uh, partisanship. Before he was to be the Postmaster General, he was supposed to be the, the, the national chair of the... Uh, the finance committee for the uh, like the Charlotte Charlotte area fucking RNC, which by the way is where they are holding the fucking RNC this year. But on top of being a Republican Party stooge, he is also a uh, business asshole uh, who has spent much of his working life uh, in the field of logistics in the past probably, I want to say, 10 years, 10, 15 years, he, his, his company, New Breed, uh, was purchased by uh, XPO Logistics, uh, which is, you know, I mean, much like FedEx, UPS, uh, DHL, these are all competitors to the USPS. Uh, he has had a long, just, you know, even apolitically, uh, a history of no real reason to give a shit about the USPS. And just tangentially, I mean, the business that he runs, New Breed, uh, is, uh, has a history of, of, of dog shit business practices, including, but not limited to, acting with anti-union animus uh, when avoiding hiring uh, international longshore and warehouse union workers when it secured a contract for a U.S. Army terminal in Compton, California, purposefully keeping employee handbooks, which uh, state company guidelines on sexual harassment, uh, out of the hands of temporary workers, uh, which ultimately resulted in three temp workers uh, suing the company for management, doing sexual harassment and making vulgar remarks. The workforce at the time was composed of 80% temporary workers. In 2014, four women working in a Memphis warehouse for New Breed suffered miscarriages after supervisors refused their requests for light duty during their pregnancies. Many workers expected that things would get better when XBO took over, but in fact they got worse. Uh, workers were required, instead of uh, packing 60 boxes an hour, they were required to pack 120 boxes an hour, so that's two boxes a minute. In 2017, a woman died of cardiac arrest on the warehouse floor, and workers around her were told to keep working around it. Here's a great one. Uh, since 2000, XBO and its subsidiaries have racked up 16 wage and hour violations, totaling $35 million. Uh, they have also been dinged six times for employment discrimination, five times for labor relations, eight times for aviation safety, and 22 times for health and safety. The state of California has repeatedly awarded back wages to XPO truck drivers who were misclassified as independent contractors. Uh, sound familiar? Now, is it fair to equate the business practices of XPO with uh, Tom DeJoy as a person and, and, and extrapolate a management style off of that? In part, probably. Uh, but it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, the thing is, the man is a vessel. He is a vessel... Uh, for the neoliberal austerity politics that we have seen uh, in the past 40 fucking years. And his job is to bring those to the post office, uh, even more than they already have been. It starts from the stupidest fucking premise on earth, which is that public services uh, need to be profitable, need to consider profits as a meaningful part of their enterprise. The more I read about the Postal Service, the more it feels like reading a fucking Thomas Pinchon novel. It is just winding and fucking stupid, and I do like Thomas Pinchon novels. But the, the, the story of how we got to our current spot is 
so fucking stupid. So the Postal Service is intended to be a self-sustaining agency, sustaining itself through the profits it derives from uh, mail fucking delivery. This, I think, is a pretty logical business model uh, in the time when uh, people didn't wash their ass very often and they didn't have electricity. Uh, and honestly, up until the 19 fucking 90s, I mean, it still made sense because that was the, the, the main method of correspondence. But they were always going to be fucked over in terms of their, their profit margins by the fact that uh, correspondence changed with the fucking internet. Because of the immense dumb guy shit of uh, people like Reagan, the Bushes, and Clinton, uh, we we got this this paradigm shift or you know a, a, a cultural shift in the way that the government was viewed uh, or in the way that the government was uh, framed politically and that was that it was a leech a drain on resources because uh, there had been a you know a growing welfare state uh, as a result of the fucking New Deal and the Great Society that was utilized you know as a as a wedge between races to uh, draw distinction and, and, and imply that that black communities that were uh, you know getting uh, government benefits like fucking housing and, and welfare and shit uh, not you know for nothing but uh, a lot of the that that's it's fucking paltry compared to the amount of structural uh, horseshit they had to deal with for the past I don't know fucking 200 years or whatever uh, any any even you know just in modern times the last the fucking from the 50s till the fucking 80s but uh, you know whatever <laughs> uh, this this was you know the language used and, and so now you know we, we see this shift that government is this leech and we have to we have to drain it you know we have to it cannot be anything more than the essentials right uh, this is the language used to justify all of these these uh, neoliberal austerity politics austerity policies and the shaving of all of these welfare programs and, and, and government services. This framing is never used on our most expensive fucking government expenditure, uh, the fucking military, which is the reason why we are in this fucking economic uh, position we're in, in the amount of debt we're in that we're always you know told is gonna be hanging over our fucking heads and hanging over our, our, our great-grandchildren's heads for fucking generations from now. Uh, it's because of the fucking Iraq war. Uh, that's probably the biggest one, the biggest uh, fucking expenditure that, that led us down this fucking path. Uh, but whatever. In 2006, while we are carrying out the Iraq War and racking up just fucking trillions of dollars in debt, uh, the Congress passes the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act. And what that does is, well, one of the biggest things that it does is uh, require within a time frame, I believe from 2007 to 2016, the Postal Service to pre-fund uh, the health benefits, the retiree health benefits of its workers for the next 50 years, uh, which is, it, it, it's, it's not hard and fast, it's not literally 50 years, but it's based on, you know, some actual aerial table or some shit that this is essentially what we're going to get and these, you know, this is about the year length of the the life expectancy of, of all of our fucking current and former retirees is about 50 75 years uh, that requires them to to make these expenditures of like five billion dollars a fucking year this uh, I think is you know it could be viewed either way I, th I think uh, it's you know it's good to to, to ensure the, the the dignity and uh, life security of your workforce uh, through the end of their life, but of course the origin of this bill, which is a, a lame duck Republican uh, Congress, uh, and of course knowing that their their entire project uh, for the past forty years has been to dismantle uh, the government and 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 
spread out and disseminate its parts and its its functions to uh, private industry. Uh, we know that it was, you know, intended to be an albatross around the neck of the 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 post office. I mean, th- this has created a crisis in so far as we view this uh, operation. We view this service as needing to be profitable. That if it doesn't make money each year, then that's that's bad. We're you know we're that's worrisome, and you know we might have to fucking. We might have to go in there and, and really, you know, teach them a lesson. And by that they mean, you know, just institute more fucking austerity fucking policies. So this crisis has been going on, and it has essentially been exacerbated over the past two decades by various, you know, bullshit policies or whatever. We get to, now we're at today. Uh, Louis DeJoy is made Postmaster General, and he has these... Uh, Reforms he institutes at the post office for, you know, efficiency. Workers are no longer, you know, allowed to take overtime to finish their route every day. Any work that is that is not finished by the end of the day goes back to the facility. Uh, you know, things are left behind, and it's in it's in clear disarray. Uh, it's even worse than it was before. Uh, which was honestly, I mean, in terms of operation, fine. Everything was fine. Uh, it didn't really take that long to get fucking mail, and things were not getting fucking lost or all fucked up uh, logistically. The the stated goal of this uh, bullshit is to bring the post office back into solvency, uh, make it more efficient, and, and, and make it profitable or whatever. And again... Uh, this is just immense dumb guy shit. Uh, the idea that we should be running the government like a business. It is not. This whole episode has felt like being fucking lobotomized. And it, it, it's the first time that I really felt like, alright, this, we're, we're in a fucking failed state. You know? Because... In either case, uh, where you are sincerely trying to run the post office like a business, or you are more realistically uh, instituting policies that are meant to uh, create distrust or anger with the post office, you are destroying a service that is essential to the functioning of our country. Whether it's to you know enrich yourself, uh, further a, a dumb guy, a dumb shit ideological project, or you know maintain your your power over over a political system, you are just fucking up the entire logistical and infrastructural functioning of a country. Which is why the response from liberals to this has been so fucking weird to me that this is, you know, destroying our democracy. Uh, That this is a way to, you know, uh, install yourself as a dictator. I mean, yeah, but it's also, like, destroying... uh, More than it's destroying our democracy, it's destroying our fucking country. I mean, the, the very fabric of how it works. I mean, like, sincerely, how the fuck would things function without the post office? And next to that, one of the saddest parts about this whole fucking thing is that as we, you know, in the dominant culture continue to valorize the fucking cops in the military and then create this, this Spartan fascist society, we are destroying, continuing to destroy the livelihoods of a, a group of workers, a, a section of our civil servants, who sincerely we cannot live without, you know? And, and beyond that, just on a human level, the thing I keep seeing in the articles about this, where where you know postal workers are talking about their their feelings on this this these new reforms and shit, is a frustration that the the postal service is being made 
impotent and inefficient and, and fucked up because for a lot of these people they have completed their route for as long as they've fucking been working there. So not only are you taking away the livelihood of these people, you're taking away something that I think very few people talk about as it relates to work, and that's taking pride in your work. Taking, having a sense of not just ownership, but of accomplishment and a, and a feeling good that you are doing something. That, that you are doing something correctly and that you're doing it for the greater good. You know? I mean, we are... Not only have we just completely bred that out of our fucking society, but anyone who even still has this kind of mindset, we are punishing. It's... Something else, man.